finally, good grief. I do apologize to all of you who've been waiting. I hate being late, especially to my own bunker warming parties. Hello to all of you. What is it? Nearly 200 people. Um, I hope the audio and video is coming through okay. I actually, even though I'm in a bunker, I do have the internet directly wired in. So <laughs> there shouldn't be any technical issues. But if there are, I do apologize. Just tell me in the live chat, is it coming through okay? Because I, I can't help but wonder whether I should hold back. It's working. Hooray, says lovely singer TV, who I can confirm is one of the loveliest singers. <laughs> um, Donna Bain says, at last. And Freethinker says, we can hear you now. Good. Excellent. I feel like I can talk without it, it all completely being lost. And wow, thank you so much for coming. What's the number now? 254. That's just insane. It was. I was watching it before and it was 70 and I was going to joke that that's a respectable number for a Kingdom Hall meeting. And then I thought, well, nowadays that's a respectable number for two Kingdom Hall meetings. But 263, uh, just insane. So thank you, everybody. And again, welcome to the Bunker Warming Party. I hope you all brought drinks. I've let you all in because it turns out you all know the secret knock. So congratulations. <laughs> and yeah, what an amazing thing. Um, hopefully you guys have seen the video I put out earlier today. So you've been on the brief tour. You know where I'm up to but the novelty still hasn't worn off of having my own dedicated workspace, of being able to come here any time of day, uh, and even being able to come here at night and not having to worry about waking anyone up or people being quiet while I'm filming. Um, it really is a huge leap forward. And uh, thanks really goes to my patrons uh, and other others who support my work for helping this to happen. Um, before I continue, perhaps it would be nice if we all go around and say where we're from, um, what parts of the world we're tuning in from. That would be interesting to know. I, I did see a few places flashing up on the live chat before while I was in exile. Um, Kentucky says Bubba Bo. Oh, good grief. <laughs> it's going crazy now. Bubba Bowie said Kentucky. Freethinker says Florida, USA. Plymouth, Devon. I've just seen Plymouth, Dev Devon flash past. Good grief. Sweden. Wales. Ah, I'm my ancestors are from Wales. So excellent. Athens, Greece. Good grief. New York, Seattle, Vancouver, Toronto, Germany. Um, Hertfordshire. Fantastic. So viewers from back home in Blighty, always welcome. Uh, in exile as I am at the other side of Europe. Uh, Boston, Norway, Denmark, a lot going on in Denmark at the moment, I've noticed. Antwerp, driven through Antwerp a couple of times. Um, Bulgaria, Japan. I, I just can't get my head around people watching my channel, and that's from Nuti. Nuti. <laughs> Sounds like naughty, but with a funny accent. Nooty. That's very nooty. Um, yeah, it, it blows my mind to see people watching the channel from such far-flung places. And it really is a testament to the internet and the power of YouTube. But I guess as well, it just shows how far-reaching uh, the influence of Jehovah's Witnesses is. So... Um, I don't have a specific <laughs> format for this. It's just basically a, a relaxed kind of conversation with my subscribers, a chance to kind of catch up. I do this sort of thing regularly with my patrons, but it's just nice to kind of th throw the doors open um, and hear from you all. So I do actually have some questions lined up. Um, first one being, how many found my channel and by the way, you can ask your own questions at any point. Um, it will be interesting for me to kind of scroll through and pick out some questions to answer. But how many of you, my subscribers, um, 
or indeed those of you who are viewing who haven't subscribed for any, for whatever reason, how many have found my channel while still believing Jehovah's Witnesses, and what was your reaction on seeing the first video? I want to see <laughs> what the answer is to that question. Meanwhile, we've got someone from Finland, so that's Koivunen from Finland, uh, Maastricht to the Netherlands from Uncomplicatedable. Uh, oh, Grimsby, fantastic. Um, ah, so Lisa for Truth says, never been a JW. Um, right, so Mr. C. North says, hey, Lloyd, will you cover the Shepherd book? Yes, but it probably won't be until next month now because I've got just a crazy, crazy month with uh, videos, principally with editing Reclaimed Voices, the Reclaimed Voices documentary. So that's really um, uh, impacting on my, uh, usually I'm more flexible to deal with that sort of thing, but I will be doing a review of the uh, Shepherd book, uh, hopefully early next month. Um, Jehovini Svidotsi Info says, we are from Serbia. Yes, I've, I've heard of you guys. So uh, well done for the work that you're doing in the, I guess you, you can't really say Serbo-Croatian, but that's what it used to be called. Um, and Sonia Mallet says Yarmouth, um, NS Canada, Nova Scotia, isn't it? NS, uh, okay. Um, so Luke, Lucas Plusowski says, I was still JW and I was terrified when watching your first video. Well, I can kind of relate to that, even though I obviously can't relate to watching my own channel for the first time. I remember that's how I felt when I first went on uh, JW Facts. Um, Yamcha Vienna says, never was JW, boyfriend was, is now ex-JW, thanks to you. Well, that's really nice to hear, Yamcha. I actually have a question for never JWs, and you've kind of answered it already, which is what brings you here, and clearly it's because of your uh, your boyfriend, and I'm delighted to hear that there's been some Success there. Oh, good grief. There's loads of... Ugh. This is scary. This is... You see, this is why you need a moderator when you're doing live streams, because how many are there now? 429. Do me a favor, guys. This is... This is crazy. How, whoa. Okay. Um, so Daniel Kellett says, found it a little while after being baptized. Sheer joy followed from seeing you put to word all the things I couldn't put to word myself. Thank you. Well, Daniel, um, yeah, that that's, gosh, um, it, it's quite incredible to hear that kind of reaction. And uh, I'm just glad that you were able to relate to what I was saying and that what I was saying was remotely um, coherent for you. Um, so Chiron Debris, there's a familiar name, says, I was... Pomi, I should probably spell that out for those of you who aren't familiar with the lingo. I was physically out mentally in when I saw, I think, your Tony Morris video. Well, there's been a number of Tony Morris videos, as you know, and there's the Easter egg in my older videos of me talking with Tony Morris. So <laughs> um, that's kind of like a little treat for people who who go to the trouble of uh, going through my older videos. So, yeah, there's a number, a number of Tony Morris videos, but you say, and the 607 one after that, and Unrighteous Riches, pretty much woken up after that. But the last step took me a few months. Well, I, I think I can relate to that, and many will be able to relate to that. It's not a simple case of, oh, the light comes on, and suddenly everything just magically falls into place. You do need to process things, I think. Um, Shal Shalunoa, I'm having great fun with these names. Never in saw your interview with Mike Rinder. That's when I started following you. But yeah, I did enjoy my conversation with Mike. Um, and I think we, we covered some interesting ground in that conversation. Dare I scroll down? Oh, good grief. It's blowing up here, guys. And I, I must, I really do apologize if I'm missing you. I'm not shunning you. <laughs> consider yourselves part of the party here um it's just literally i'm overwhelmed with the number of comments and questions 
Uh, Injustice System 27 says, your videos literally kept me sane some days while I was physically and mentally out and being bombarded by the propo all the time. I don't know what propo is. Is that really bad? Uh, there's a word that I don't know. I'm not in on the inside lingo at this point. You made me feel like I was the sane one in an insane world. Thank you. I think we can all relate to feeling that way. Um, and Duradis says, Hi, Lloyd. Love your work from Canada here. Following the class action closely, thanks for your activism and your informative videos. Um, and I seem to have lost the rest of the question. But, yeah, the class action in Canada, uh, we are keeping tabs on that at Watch Time in Focus. And, you know, as soon as there's, um, you know, something that we can really get our teeth into with that and other stories, we'll definitely, um, you know, jump on and do an episode. And frankly, I'm really looking forward to doing a Watch Time in Focus episode from my new digs. Um, and I've said to the Watch Time in Focus team, look, if you can get here, if you can get to the bunker in person, it would be really great to have you here in person for an episode. Uh, it's a nice big desk that can fit several people around it. So, yeah, definitely. Now, dare I scroll down even more? Oh, good grief. Um, uh, um, <laughs> 2153 says, me and my dad are leaving, but the rest of my family are shunning me and him. You are my last hope because I'm losing everything. Gosh, thank you so much for being here and helping us out. Well, I, I've feel heartbroken reading that. I'm sorry that things are so desperate for you. I guess that when you're going through those early stages of waking up or recalibrating your life, it's always going to be very difficult. But um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think many of us can vouch for that. Um, you find that things just settle after a while. And even if people uh, behave awfully for reasons usually connected with what they've been told to do by Watchtower. One way or another, they have to accept the situation. And that's been my experience. Dave Rum 777 says, you're like a family member after all these years now. Know you for, on oh, the comments, disappeared. How do I stop it from, ah, no, no, it's disappeared. Sorry about that. But it's nice to feel like a family member to someone. Beach Mom 2001, I'm not going to even touch it this time in hopes that it won't move. Maybe you could do a video about young adults who came in in their 20s and how it affected their lives, wasting their valuable 20s and 30s in this cult. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in exploring all angles of it. I guess there aren't that many. I'm sure there are people who enter the Jehovah's Witness religion at that sort of age. Um, for a variety of reasons. Um, unquestionably, the the majority, I would say, um, get born into it. But yeah, it'd be interesting to hear the perspective of people who were genuinely persuaded, um, perhaps by being contacted on the door-to-door -door preaching work. Because my experience is that that just doesn't work. <laughs> but clearly, it, there must have been some success. Um, so yeah, interested to hear, by the way, if you were, if you ever succeeded in bringing someone into, I'm not going to say the words, if you ever succeeded in bringing someone into the organization from meeting them on the door to door preaching work, uh, let me hear from you in the comments and hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to find your comments in all of these hundreds that I'm being blinded by. Um, Hydinen says, just came here to pop in, have a look at what's going on. Seems quite busy. I'm off to bed. Work tomorrow. Well, <laughs> like, thank you for saying hi. You know, that's the beauty of this sort of party. You can come and go as you please, I guess. Um, let me just kind of scroll up. I, I'm, I'm, I hate the idea of missing some of these brilliant comments that are coming through. Um, Michelle Ostrowski says, my boyfriend, never JW, showed me your channel. I was fresh out, but still fully indoctrinated. What a shock I went through. You made me feel like I was not going crazy and that Satan hadn't taken over my mind. Well, again, um, and, and what a loving thing for your boyfriend to do, to, 
to take that level of interest where he's kind of doing your research for you and is able to broach the subject in a way that I'm sure was very kind of respectful and non-confrontational and made you want to look into it a little bit more. Uh, Rebecca Pearl says, I was out for 13 years but still indoctrinated. I was absolutely shocked in a positive way. Well, I'd hate to shock you in a negative way, Rebecca. Uh, finally found someone reliable to listen to. Well, I am uh, actually not very reliable in most things, but I'm glad that you at least think that. And um, let's see. Roger Smith says, New Zealand left 2016 and searched YouTube and found you. These sorts of years, I mean, 2016, that's that's what, uh, just two, two-ish, two and a bit years ago. And it just, I, I love the idea of people leaving that recently, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. I mean, there's going to be people leaving sort of last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's it's fantastic to see that kind of exodus happening. Um, okay, so uh, Shell E says, when I left in 1999, there was nothing. I was completely alone as the first out two years before others joined me. What you were doing is a lifeline. I'm thankful I never succeeded in the ministry. Few, well, Shelley, that makes two of us. Uh, nine years I was pioneering. Didn't manage to get anyone interested from the doorstep, which is why I'm interested to hear if anyone actually did succeed in doing that. Um, and do you feel guilt for having done that? I'm not su suggesting that you should feel guilt, but uh, yeah, interested to hear your perspectives on that. Um, Bob Vischer says, you helped my wife leave the organization, a voice of reason for her in her darkest times. Can't thank you enough. Bob, my my head is going to explode at this point. There's just too many nice things being said. But um, <laughs> that's very kind of you to say that. And regards to your wife as well. Um, Budisa SB says, great to see you in your bunker. I was brought in by door-to-door -door preaching in my 20s. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. There was a few in our hall, all, brind all brought in by the same pioneer. Well, that's fascinating. I'd be interested to know what it was about that particular pioneer that made her or him or her so successful in bringing multiple people into the organization. So maybe yeah, if you could expand on that, what, what did... Uh, prompt your interest if I can find your answers, which I will certainly try to. Oh gosh, there's been a, okay, there's been a super chat thing. Uh, Mormon Jesus 69420 says, born into the religion, third generation, after getting baptized at 16, I started questioning, left at 19 when I moved to uni, 23 now, and videos like yours help me, even though my parents don't shun me. Well, I'm really thrilled that my videos are helping you, Mormon Jesus. Congratulations on picking a very cool name, by the way. And um, I'm delighted as well that your parents aren't shunning you. I think that there's a lot to be said for parents who have managed to move past their indoctrination and, and let their humanity shine through. So it says a lot about your folks that that's true of them. Um, uh, Shaleen Price says, thank you. Well, Shaleen, thank you as well. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Gail Hatton says, my dad was presiding overseer in the Kingdom Hall, but would beat up my older sister and me, and we would have to sit in the hall covered with bruises, and they still don't understand why we left. You know, this kind of story right there, um, it enrages me to, to think that, that the domestic violence can be so apparent that you've got an elder who's beating up his kids and they're sat there in the hall with bruises and no one cares. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think, I think that that's an incredible low to stoop to, not just for him, but for the people who were enabling him by not doing anything and not challenging him about why his kids were there with bruises. So... Gosh, well done for living through that and, and living to tell the story. Uh, Sarah Marie Capaldi has sent through a super chat. Thank you very much, Sarah Marie. 
uh, get yourself some wall decorations. You're at circuit assembly numbers now. Am I really? I haven't checked the um, 529. Bloody hell. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for, on, on a Sunday, no less, um, choosing to share your Sunday with me. It's very kind of you. But to answer your question, Sarah, Sarah Marie, there will be, I would I would say enjoy it while it's this bare because <laughs> it's not going to be like this forever. That I do have lots of ideas. So um, if you watch my latest video, you'll know that this is the pillow gate wall. Uh, there will be kind of a pillow gate theme, but there will also be a shelf on the wall with various items on it to catch the eye. Um, this will be the on this wall will be the Watchtower collection. We've got uh, Kevin's corner. There's a surprise in store for the ceiling where the, where it's kind of at a slope. I'm going to reveal that at a later point. And I thought today that this could be, um, this area here with kind of recesses could be the Hitchens wall. And I plan to have like maybe a little tribute to Hitchens there. So uh, that's, yeah, enjoy it while it's bare is all I would say. Um, thanks so much to everyone who is sending through um, super chats and just donations. It's just incredible, and I'm I'm very deeply moved by how many of you have chosen to spend your Sunday with me. It's actually quite touching. Um, I guess I'd better answer some more questions. Let's see. Um, so, Annie, let's see. Let me find that last one. It's just moving so fast. If I call out your name and I, I'm not able to read the question, I really do apologize. It really is awful. Um, let's see. So Sandra Todd says, I was a root call for 30 years, then did Bible study, field service, baptism, and left three years after that as I wasn't told or explained a lot since leaving, you have educated me better than EJW. Sandra, that's fantastic. And wow, a root call for 30 years. Incredible. Um, <laughs> I think we've all had, when we were JWs, root calls like that, where nothing seemed to happen. But clearly, at some point, you decided to take the plunge, and it didn't last very long by the sounds of things. Uh, thank you. Is it Rachel09? Keep up your good work, my dude. Uh, I will certainly try to. And Sharon Debris, uh, with another super chat, says, great party. You could use some singing, though. Well, <laughs> do we really want to go there? <laughs> because, um, yeah, that, that's a very kind of specialist um, form of pleasure that you've, you've requested. Uh, I'm not sure that it's for everybody, my singing. But it really just depends on on where things go from here. How how crazy this party gets. So, gosh, this is just I'm still blown away by how many people are joining me. And Spiro, who is actually um, part of the JW Survey team, hello Spiro, says, "Hey Lloyd, I heard you got a new tech guy. Oh, here we go. Uh, if you had to pick between two options." Would you say he's awesome or incredible? Spiro, I would choose neither option. I would say that my new tech guy is a legend, and his name is Spiro Floropolis. So, <laughs> uh, but nice to see you in the live chat, buddy. Uh, what else have we got? Incognito Fade says, My mother knows I have walked away. I have many negative things to say about this organization, but she views me as inactive, not an apostate. Well, I guess that explains your name, Incognito Fade. And yes, we've just got to do what we can, haven't we, to stay below the radar in that situation. Uh, a live chat, uh, sorry, a super chat's come through, $10. Wow, that's, that's just phenomenal. Thank you so much for the support. And suffice to say, um, the... Any kind of money, whether it's Patreon or through the Super Chat, it's all just going to go into sprucing this place up and making it, you know, fulfill my my vision for it, which, yeah, I, th I think you'll be pleased once it's all finished. But I, in a way, I'm, I'm glad that you guys get to follow on the journey and, 
you know, in each video, see hopefully some slight improvements on what's happening. There, I, oh, there, I just saw Andy Towell. I just saw Andy Towell's name. Wow. Andy and I kind of go way back. He's one of a, a like a maybe a dozen people who knew me as a JW. And it's it's so nice. I think there's very few, there are very few more, um, more kind of pure joys, I think, as an XJW than when you manage to reconnect with someone who actually knew you, you, you both knew each other as JWs and you're able to be on the other side together as survivors. So great to see you, Andy. Um, look out for Andy Does Ales, I think is his YouTube channel, if you're interested in ales. Um, yeah, so a number of other <laughs> mentally diseased says Spiro, legendary. Uh, and Thank you, uh, Mentally Diseased, for being here. Mentally Dis Diseased and I are going to be doing uh, a collaboration on another channel. Uh, Shannon Q has, is having us on with Telltale, so look out for that collaboration in the near future. Richard Bruning has said, Sing when we hit 600. Gosh. Wow. Um, well, have we hit? Well, we're, we're at 520 for now, So, and I'm not promising anything either because – I. If I get to 600 and I start singing, the risk is always that it goes down to <laughs> five. So uh, let's just kind of not <laughs> not run ahead of ourselves there. Um, Double Zero Split says, Hello, Lloyd. I absolutely love all your videos. I've watched tons, and I can't thank you enough for getting the kingdom off my back. That's a fantastic way of putting it. Uh, thank you, says Double Zero Split. Well, Thank you for that comment. And just Mama Bear says, I was a study and then baptized from door ministry. Left two months ago in order to leave my abusive marriage. Your videos have been such a huge help. Thank you so much. Well, um, I'm glad my videos were helpful for you, just Mama Bear. But it sounds like there was a heck of a lot of bravery um, in you just making that step to challenge your beliefs and look what was on the other side of the curtain. So huge respect and admiration for you. Um, and Chris Vendetta with a, a super chat. You look like Kevin. <laughs> Congrats for your bunker. Much Italian respect. Wow, Chris. Well, listen, I love Italy. And as you know, Chris, I'm not that far away here in Croatia. So maybe at some point I'll be able to come over uh, Venice isn't that far from me, actually. So it would be lovely to do some kind of event in Italy. And maybe if that were to happen, we could shake hands or maybe even have a hug. Who knows? To see see what how the mood takes us. Um, and Dragon Ban says, A small thank you for helping me wake up. My dad found a, about my doubts, so I have to save up since I'm facing the reality of living in my car. If I make one wrong move, gosh, well, you shouldn't be doing super chats then. Um, but wow, that's such a, a generous gesture. And I, I think I speak for all 555 who are here, or at least the majority of us in saying, you know, stick at it, uh, persevere. It's a very, very difficult situation when you're still dependent on your parents like that you rely on them uh you trust them to not forsake you just because you're having doubts um so you know credit to you um for again having that bravery to just make a stand for what you believe in i really do admire that and uh best of luck with your future plans um let's see who's this Richard Bruning says, your empathy for others struggling really helps. Well, it, it's, I think that um, in all seriousness, Richard, um, I don't think I could do this if I wasn't remembering what it was like to be a Jehovah's Witness, and particularly in the case that we've just mentioned, a young Jehovah's Witness, and how reliant you are on, on your parents, and how terrified you are of disappointing them, not living up to their expectations. I vividly remember um, on one occasion, one family worship evening, I can't remember what age I would have been, 
it would have been something like, mm, let's say, I'm going to say 10 or 11, something like that age. And usually in family worship evenings, I was reasonably, I, of, the, of me and my sister, I was the one who was quite engaged in what was happening. I viewed it almost as an intellectual exercise and, again, an opportunity to, you know, hopefully impress my parents. But on this one particular family worship evening, I just zoned out. And my mind was elsewhere. I couldn't concentrate. I found it very boring. And my mum just kind of angled a look at me across the room and, and said, what's the matter, Lloyd? Don't you want to be a Jehovah's Witness? And that comment just made me sit bolt upright in my chair. And yes, I do want to be a Jehovah's Witness because I could see the disappointment in her eyes. And don't get me wrong, if you've read my book, you'll know how I feel about my mum and how um, how much I care about her still, even though she's no longer with us. But that sort of memory stays with me. Um, and I think I think when you're in the business of making material that will hopefully help Jehovah's Witnesses and, and people who are going through these issues, it's helpful to draw on that um, for for inspiration, but also, yes, for empathy. So, um, A, oh, crumbs, there's, there's umlauts here. <laughs> a, you, so, uh, with, a, with a very kind super chat, um, Thomas, thanks, Lloyd. Your channel and the JW podcast helped me to survive. Great podcast, The Flood, and I love the conversation with Nathan Quarry. When will the podcast go on and you see <laughs> multiple, multiple requests, possibly more requests than I've had in my life up to this point <laughs> for, for me to sing. And all I would say, A.U., is that you really need to be directing this request to James because it's really his podcast. He just lets me come on and and run my mouth off. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think that what we need, listen, what we need is we need all of these kind of multiple people, um, more than two, to organize uh, into a movement. And this movement needs to leave James Payton under no doubts whatsoever that the success of JW Podcast relies on me being given at least, I'm going to say, 30 seconds to sing. If we, if I had 30 seconds per episode, just think what heights I could push that show to. But it's out of my hands for now, I'm afraid. Um, okay, I'm going to kind of very cautiously see how many comments have come through with 500 and with, what was it 555 um I, i'm really struggling to even click on this oh andy Tal says don't 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 sing buddy please i've heard it yes andy does know what my singing's like so there's a wise man uh, but don't listen to him you should still organize and uh and persuade james payton to do the unthinkable um Madavel1975-1914, question mark, question mark, question mark, says, my dad is an elder in the UK. He gave a father of the bride speech at my sister non-JW wedding. None of us have heard from him since. Is there a chance he was reprimanded as a result? Well, <laughs> well when you say... None of us have heard from him since. Now, do you mean literally he's kind of gone AWOL and he's a missing person? I think you'd have you have more pressing issues if that's the case. But uh, yeah, if if he's not been answering or if he's um, if he seems to have been knocked down a peg or two, then it could well be that he's been reprimanded for doing something very unelderly or any very AW. Uh, thank you. This is SGBDG. Thank you so much for your work. Wish I could have known you a few years earlier when I left the organization, but there was no YouTube. Best wishes from Germany. Nice bunker. Uh, and that's from Susan, an ex-pioneer. So, Susan, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not far from Germany either, and I do occasionally think that it would be nice to come to Germany and do something, do some kind of event. So, 
again, it would be lovely to connect with you and other German uh, XJWs at some point. Although, warning, I my German isn't that great. It's kind of the the most basic German you could possibly envision. Um, thank you, Billy O'Neill, for for the uh, kind donation on the super chat. Uh, Nigel Nachi says, greetings from South Africa. Fantastic. Old friend of the show, Susan Gaskin. Got to go, but thanks, Lloyd, for everything and all your awesome work. Bye, everyone. All the best to you. Susan, thanks so much for popping in and, again, devoting some of your Sunday to uh, the Bunker Party, which I think is going very well because already we've had multiple requests for me to sing. Um, whether they will actually be successful. We'll have to wait and see. Make Britain great again, gosh, says, I hope you're not wearing any of those tight trousers that turn Anthony Morris the third on. The, the question you should be asking is, am I wearing any trousers? <laughs> I have a big desk now. Um, Honest Conscience Dave. Crumbs, it's just shifted. Honest Conscience Dave says, thoughts on waking people up at the upcoming memorials, April 19th, like going to partake and socialize one-on-one -on -one with JWs regarding issues. Uh, yeah, well, I, I honestly don't view memorials as an opportunity to engage in respectful dialogue with Jehovah's Witnesses, period. I mean... If you remember, if going back to what I was saying earlier, I think you need to remember what it's like to be a JW and just how sacred those events were. You don't have time to be thinking about anything else, really, and it's also quite a social thing. And yeah, I'm not. I can think of lots of other uh, opportunities when it would be productive to engage with the JW. For example, when they're car witnessing, well their job in theory is to talk about their belief. So there should be no problem with you doing that. But yeah, I don't see, I, I can't think of Memorial season as having a, a real, a really obvious kind of uh, opportunity for people to engage. But I think that anyone who does engage, whether it's in a kingdom hall setting or can't witnessing, you can't go far wrong by, following the principles of street epistemology uh, as espoused by Anthony Magnobosco, a friend of mine, which is just a, a really nice, respectful, uh, dialectic way of engaging with people who may have very different views to yours. Um, Up Mayo has sent through 10 English pounds, not for the bunker, by your daughter, some little thing. Well... <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. That's very kind of you. Uh, she does. We are actually having a family day tomorrow. We were supposed to have it today, but for various reasons. Actually, it's because we postponed the family day that I'm doing this live stream, but we're having it tomorrow instead. So we're having a Monday family day. And that £10 will go towards uh, something nice for Jessica. She, with, with that amount, the possibilities, I think it's safe to say, are endless so thank you very much for that and gosh another um two more super chats matt arnold says like many i can't thank you enough for helping me cross that bridge over to reason an audiobook version of the reluctant apostate still in the works question mark um so what i'm doing with the reluctant apostate because the thing is when i when i did the escape book it taught me that for a book that's a quarter of the size of The Reluctant Apostate, it took me two weeks to record the audiobook. So <laughs> it would take me about two months to do an audiobook for The Reluctant Apostate. And I'm not writing it off. It's just that I've decided that um, probably that's a project for when I do the second edition of The Reluctant Apostate, which will probably be something like um, I'm going to say 2022. I, I, I think five years is a reasonable a reasonable gap. Um, but yeah, we'll start. It's not impossible, but at least for now, we have the escape book uh, as an audio book. Um, wow, just some really generous 
super chats coming through and I can't thank you guys enough. It, honestly, it's all going directly into my work and, you know, um, improving the bunker. So it's very helpful indeed. SW says, Lloyd, you freed me mentally and my mother left also. Your voice of sanity was there when we were alone. Thank you. Tuning into your calm presence was a constant in a turbulent time. I direct others to your channel and books. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Again, my head is in danger of exploding <laughs> at this point. Um, but yeah, that's very, very kind. And I'm just glad that you found something I've said or something I've done helpful in your in your case. Um, gosh, uh, Roger says, come to Arizona sometime soon. I'm, I'm Roger. I'd like nothing more. I've actually been to Arizona and think it's beautiful with the cactuses. I can't think what they're called now. Um, but yeah, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful landscape in Arizona you've got there. Truth Seeker Atheist, a friend of the channel who you will find uh, featured in my Warwick documentary, uh, says, I forgot all about the memorial. It was Bible students' most important celebration. It was like having a meeting with zombies. Well, Truth Seeker Atheist, I think your memorials must have been quite different from, from the ones I remember. There were no zombies that I could recall, but, you know, never, um, <laughs> never dismiss the possibility of different religions doing things differently. That's all I could say to that, really. And JW Insider says, Lloyd, can you look into contacting Oprah about the JW? <laughs> well, since you ask. Yes, is that Oprah? <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and get through the rest of the comment. I, I will say this, though. I think that you are dramatically um, overestimating my contacts with celebrities, but Let's continue. Can you look into contacting Oprah about the JW policy regarding child molestation? Would be shocking as she herself was molested. She just may do a special like Leah Remini. Listen, any... I, I, yeah, if I, if I had Oprah on speed dial, I would probably do something very similar to what you're asking. Uh, I will say this, though, that uh, I think that there's... There's being, there's having that experience, but there's also being in a cult and understanding how cults work and how cults make abuse more likely or exacerbate abuse. And I think that Leah is in quite a unique situation as far as that's concerned. But it's, you know, it, it's not like there's a monopoly on covering the story. And I'd, I would always do what I can to encourage, you know, "Quote unquote mainstream exposure of what's going on with Jehovah's Witnesses and Southern Boar's Lady with a, a very kind uh, super chat says thanks Lloyd for your awesome activism. The small one, the XJW community, will become a mansion. Oh gosh, you've just triggered. How many have you triggered there, Southern Boar's Lady? Right, you've triggered five hundred and sixty-four, five hundred and sorry, forty-six people." Um, or at least most of them, with th that comment. So just go away and think about what you've done. But thank you still. Um, also, Brother Jones's group will be taking out the speaker today. Taking out? Gosh. Well, that, that sounds rather menacing. <laughs> Don't take out the speaker. He's, he's just doing his job. Um, Danielle LaSalle, with another super chat. Thank you, Danielle. Says, I wanted to help with the book launch years ago, but was still in the closet. I'm out now and happy to openly donate to your work. Thank you for all you do. You should go on real time with Bill Maher. I, I, well, I'd love to go on real time with Bill Maher, but more importantly, um, congratulations for being free to be yourself and um, making that progression. And yeah, I hope we're able to meet in person at some point. Same applies to many of you watching. But, yeah, thank you for that very kind comment and for the super chat. That's really appreciated. Uh, Gabrielle Langevin says, I like your – sorry for the bad pronunciation, by the way. Um, 
I like your book, Presently Travelling. I am reading it. Well, that's the thing to do is to read it. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Gabrielle. Or Gabriel, sorry. I didn't mean to imply anything. Um, and at least Koskinimi says, gosh, it's just something's just happened. Um <laughs> said something which i don't know because it's just disappeared but thank you for commenting gosh and chris vendetta says there is any way in the fu future to make your work more easily translatable like your video that i translated in italian 62 apostates who love jw as well first of all chris thank you so much for translating that video i know what you mean my particular style of writing, including when I'm writing video scripts, doesn't necessarily lend itself to translation. I've been told that by Diana. She says, you're a nightmare to translate <laughs> because you use you know, certain words and, and certain ways of, of talking that it's not immediately obvious to someone who isn't native English. So I do get that. All I would say is that... Um, um, with videos, I think it's just a case of choosing the right video, especially the shorter ones, like the one you translated. Um, I would, I wouldn't even attempt to translate some of the like one, two hour rebuttals. There's just too much work there. But yeah, try and focus on the shorter ones if you do want to do that. And you will always have my deep appreciation for making my videos available in more languages and. That's that's becoming a thing now where um, you guys are actually, through the community features, submitting the translations in non-English languages, which are giving the videos broader reach. So I've got so much gratitude for those of you who are doing that. I try and stay on top of that process because I need to jump on and approve the translations. I try and check reasonably frequently if there's anything that needs approving. But yeah, it just gives it that extra um, push, uh, I think, and makes the work available, again, to more people. So I really appreciate those of you who do that. Uh, Galene Gregorius with a really kind super chat. Thank you. You are my favorite apostate. Thank you. Amazing after 33 years to realize parts of me that had not awoken fully, never even baptized. Gosh. My boyfriend recently fell in love with an inactive presiding overseer. Big secrets he kept for a year. Well, there's definitely a story there, Gaylene. Um, but all I say is I'm glad that you have found my work helpful. And uh, yeah, very kind of you to, um, to speak out and to say hello. I, I appreciate that. And Karen Henant, or Hanant, sorry, says half of family are Jehovah's Witnesses, had no idea what they actually stood for. Now changing our will so that our children are never in their care. Thank you. Well, Karen, you're very wise to do that. And in fact, yeah, uh, those of us, how many are now watching? Those of the, many of the 540 plus who are watching will probably be thinking, gosh, I need to get on the case with that. Because in my own case, we could conceivably have a scenario where, you know, where Jessica, where there's a dilemma with Jessica if something were to happen to me and Deanna. So you've actually reminded me of something there. So thank you very much for that comment. And Deborah D says, glad to see you are in the bunker from Sacramento, California. Wish I had more to give because your work is excellent. Well, honestly, Deborah, um, I don't expect anything. So anything, uh, any, any kind of uh, donations like that are very much appreciated and do go into helping me do what I do and just opening up more possibilities, I guess, for me to do more ambitious projects as well. Um, Julie Vell... Del Vecchio, I need to thank you for a very kind super chat. That's that's just marvelous. So thank you for that. I'm going to scroll down and see what comments are coming in. Um, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Roger says, I wonder what percentage of Jehovah's Witnesses are physically and mentally out. 
I would think that there are many, but too afraid to leave, else they'll lose their families. I think one major screw up by the governing body and they'd all leave. Well, you say that, Roger, but I think that here's the thing. With the with cult indoctrination, it takes a massive screw up. And even then you can find find excuses. I was saying to Deanna about how, you know, I was um indoctrinated as a JW, albeit 